Opening the season at home with convincing wins over Denver and Boston, the Raiders immediately found themselves in a critical must-win situation. The undefeated Kansas City Chiefs, defending league champions, came to the Coliseum. The early season showdown brought a crowd of more than 50,000. Oakland's defense made it an important play early in the game. Safety Roger Bird intercepted Glenn Dawson's pass. Quickly, Darrell LaMonica passed to Clem Daniels, the halfback, for a score. The Raiders held just a three-point lead as the second half began. And they saw it threatened when linebacker Bobby Bell intercepted deep in Oakland territory. But as it did so often in 1967, the defense turned the momentum. Ike Lassiter and Dan Connors teamed up on a big, big play. Lassiter made the hit. Connors grabbed the ball and thundered 49 yards to the Chiefs' 27. Oakland had to settle for a field goal, but the momentum, which had been Kansas City's, now belonged to the Raiders. The Chiefs, though, were far from finished as Mike Garrett hit Otis Taylor for a score. It remained for LaMonica to bring the Oakland offense back with the clincher late in the game. Daniels' fine run set it up. On an unusual tight end screen, Fine blocks by Wayne Hawkins and Fred Boletnikoff enabled Billy Cannon, 1959 Heisman Trophy winner from LSU, to score. It was Oakland's day, narrowly 23-21. A vital part of the Raider win was the excellent work of the special teams, controlling lightning-fast Nolan Smith, the Chiefs' punt and kickoff return specialist. Tough rookies, Dwayne Benson of Hamlet, Bob Cruz of Wayne State, Bill Fairband of Colorado, and veterans Ken Herrock of West Virginia, Bill Budness of Boston University, Jim Harvey of Mississippi, and Carlton Oates of Florida A&M were among top special teams performers. After their only loss of the season, a 27-14 thumping administered in New York by Joe Namath and the Jets, the Raiders moved on to Buffalo for the second leg of the difficult Eastern Tour. In retrospect, the game was perhaps the most pivotal of the season. Another loss would have dropped Oakland two full games behind unbeaten San Diego. On the other hand, a victory would put the club's record at 4-1 and one and keep pressure on the Chargers. A record crowd was in War Memorial Stadium to see former Buffalo quarterback Darrell LaMonica, dual veteran Bill signal caller Jack Kemp. Instead, they saw a battle between two outstanding defensive units. Now nicknamed the 11 Angry Men by a New York journalist, the Oakland defense put on an awesome display. The front four with the assistance of linebackers Gus Otto of Missouri, Bill Lasky of Michigan, and Dan Connors of Miami made Kemp's afternoon a long one. This punt return by Roger Bird and a subsequent pass to Fred Boletnikoff enabled the Raiders to lead 10-7. Less than two minutes to play in the half, Kemp ran into trouble near his own goal line, and Dan Connors turned it into a TD and a 10-point lead. In the third period, the Bills narrowed the gap on a play strikingly similar to the Connors interception. 290-pound Jim Dunaway rumbled to the Oakland three-yard line. And it was Keith Lincoln who scored. With the Bills pressing to take control of the game and trailing by just three points, safety Howie Williams made his most important interception of the season. Under LaMonica's direction, the Raiders turned it into a score.
Kent later hit X-Raider Art Powell for a touchdown, but too late, and Oakland tucked away a very large victory. A week later in Boston, dependable Roger Hagberg came off the bench, scored a pair of touchdowns, and sparked the Raiders to a 48-14 victory that completed a successful Eastern trip. Raider offensive guard Wayne Hawkins, an off-season member of the staff of the Oakland Bank of Commerce, is seen here with bank president Carol Weaver, who has led not only the destinies of the Oakland Bank of Commerce as they have helped build the East Bay and Bay Area, but many important business firms in the area. The Oakland Bank of Commerce is a full-service bank in every respect, and as pro football has its specialists, Coach Weaver insists that members of the bank staff know something about the business of its customers. Thus, bank officers and staff members know not only the people they do business with, but something about that business. You are watching as various bank officers consult with officials of some of the business establishments they have helped build and continue to build. Whether it's a loan to expand or financing in a foreign country, or helping to guide the Oakland Raiders Boosters Club, the Oakland Bank of Commerce and its staff are there continuing to help build not only the East Bay, but the Bay Area as well. The Oakland Bank of Commerce. The Raiders returned home winners in five of their first six games, trailing division-leading San Diego, who were still unbeaten but once tied. The battle for first place between the two bitter California rivals was sold out several days before kickoff. A record crowd of 53,474 turned out in balmy 70-degree weather. After the Raiders had scored first on a safety by Dan Birdwell, LaMonica and Clem Daniels hooked up on a picture pass play for a Raider touchdown. For the third time in as many games, safety Roger Bird and his teammates on the Raider punt return unit made an important contribution. The Corbin Comet, a first-round draft choice in 1966, blasted up the middle for 78 yards. Monica later scored, and Oakland led 16-3, but the Chargers proved their explosiveness on the very first play after the kickoff, as the legendary Lance Allworth took a perfectly thrown pass from John Havel. The Oakland effort that day featured, among other things, three pass interceptions by cornerback Dave Grayson, the veteran from Oregon, who had replaced Willie Brown, injured in the second quarter. Throughout 1967, when John Rauch went to the Oakland bench, he picked winners. Time after time, replacements for injured starters came up with important, and in some cases, game-winning plays. The Raider offense also stood out on a day that was all Oakland. Fred Boletnikov made a great catch. And Clem Daniels ripped off his longest run of the season. George Blanda had a pass intercepted. But that situation was put right and in a hurry by Warren Wells. The final was Oakland 51, San Diego 10. The Raiders were the new Western Division leaders with six victories and only one defeat. The Silver and Black extended its win string to five and moved the season mark to eight and one with tough victories over Denver and Miami. Despite their glittering record, the Raiders couldn't put daylight between themselves and San Diego. The Chargers remain just a half game back of Oakland with the Raiders scheduled to face the powerful Kansas City Chiefs Thanksgiving Day in Kansas City. Opening in place of all-league halfback Clem Daniels, who was injured four days earlier against the Miami Dolphins, second-year pro Pete Banaszak of Miami University proved equal to the challenge, as did Larry Todd, who backed up Banaszak later in the year. Fred Boletnikov had a big day, as did most of Oakland's offense.
defensive secondary of ex-Nebraska sprint star Kent McLuhan and Grambling's Willie Brown at corners and Roger Bird, Warren Powers, Howie Williams, and Dave Grayson sharing duties at safety made a sizable contribution to the defensive effort that day. Brown and Powers each had touchdown interceptions. And the rest of the Oakland defense added to its string of outstanding performances. The Chiefs managed some spectacular offense, but not enough as Oakland kept winning. This time, 44-22. The Raiders had won 9 of 10, but San Diego dogged their heels with a come-from-behind win over Denver. The Turkey Day wins by the Raiders and Chargers set the stage for one of the most important games of the 67 season. A record crowd packed San Diego's plush new stadium to watch the AFL's hottest rivalry, Oakland versus San Diego, in a moment of truth battle. As at Oakland, stakes were first place in the West. The Raiders scored first after a 75-yard march that featured good blocking in the offensive line by tackles Bob Swiers of USC and Harry Shue of Memphis State. Fred Boletnikoff caught the touchdown pass. The score was tied when on third and short yardage, Oakland fooled the Charger defense. La Monica to Cannon. Down by 10, the dangerous Chargers came tearing back. Hadel to the great Lance Allworth. The remainder of the half was a whirlwind of action. Oakland raced to a 31-14 lead after a Willie Brown interception. And a pass to Hewlett Dixon. Both of these plays preceded...